Okay, so um, yes, as Tomas was saying there, um, I was a member of the Ord Corda as Oakfield, and back in 2017, myself and Warner Brannigan would have visited a lot of the uh, provincial conventions and to a couple of branches and county boards as well, um, with the publication known as Enre Nua Nanog. And um, so the title I've chosen to kind of give you a bit of background of this is going beyond Mullinoiga. And it's a phrase that, that we use quite regularly in our activities. But how exactly do we go beyond that is what um, we were looking at at the time. And um, just a bit of background about myself, I suppose, just as the pages that is uh, changing there, I just want to say hello to my former colleagues on the court who gave me a lot of support and encouragement uh, during my time there. So as uh, Tomas says, I'm, my name is Damien McGuinness and I come from County Sligo and my Coltis branch is the trailer branch of Coltis, which is located in West Sligo. So basically from Ballas Adair, right along the coast, out as far as the Mayo border as we're heading towards Ballina. And when you think of Sligo and our historic links to the music tradition, South Sligo tends to get uh, quite, uh, quite highlighted. Um, and what the case was with Coltis in the ground growing up for me was that there was two branches, the East branch and the South branch, which amalgamated. And it formed the Terreira branch, and the name comes from the Barony area of West Sligo. And what happened kind of once that happened was that we saw a bit of a renaissance in the West Sligo area in terms of younger people joining the branch. And since I was a member, it was practically, I'd say about 80% of our, of our membership were, were young people or learning musicians. So I first became youth officer uh, many years ago now, in 2003. And I would have been kind of starting to teach music, the usual, coming up from the age of 16 and onwards, kind of learning my trade and, you know, get, getting used to how to, to become a leader among, among my peers and among younger children. And that kind of led me towards my own career as a primary school teacher. But as I moved towards my leaving service in 2009, it just so happened that we were hosted the county flag in my home village of the West. And trying to do the lead and search and be involved in a county flat was quite difficult. And then as I moved to Dublin for my tutor training in college, I found that the youth officer uh, task that I was trying to do was quite difficult to do for myself. So what we decided was to form a subcommittee of three youth officers uh, that would kind of work together. So on paper, we had one of us that was kind of youth officer of the branch as uh, stated in the Bunrock, but there was three of us working together uh, sharing the sharing the role, taking on different aspects of it, of the, of the task, and because you know, between school and then moving on towards college, and a lot of the youth officers as they're heading towards their their twenties, they are taking up a, a, a lot of their time with their studies or their work commitments, and it can be difficult to get them to to uh, fulfil the role uh, fully. So we found that this is quite beneficial, and that's where the idea of creating some kind of youth officer manual came from. So we're in an Anog, and that's the cover of it here now. So I'm glad to see that it's up on the website and it's uh, read, readily available again. And um, so it, it covers a couple of different aspects of uh, youth officer role. So for this evening, the aims of this presentation is to firstly provide any current youth officers with more detail and info on their roles, responsibilities, and capabilities, but also to spread awareness um, of the role and the opportunities in having youth officer, or if you're not up in the line of having a few that form kind of a spoken to youth, officer, youth officers, provide ideas and advice and assist in youth officers and to facilitate any questions in the community. So, the first one, what does the youth officer do? So, at the start of kind of consultation with um, with this publication, I went back to uh, the Connacht Provincial Council and we had a youth forum within the, the province. I uh, can't remember what year it was, but it's quite a it's probably around 2014, 2015. And um, I kind of did a bit of a survey and some of the reasons uh, why the members there, the youth officers that were present, decided to become youth officers were uh, as they're on screen there to help children uh, learn music to get involved with other branches. It looks good in the CV, of course. So again, it's not just to benefit the branch, but it's, it's good for the personal development as well. Um, to organize some non-competitive events, uh, which, you know, it's something that we can kind of look at uh, a little bit more closely at times. We'll obviously have uh, a lot of competition-based activities with the FLANA. So looking at kind of what other non-competitive activities we can build on and to improve the standards of sessions in the area. Again, these are coming from youth officers at the time in Connacht. So spotting the spark 
as so you know a youth officer mightn't always be readily available but we mightn't always get young person that might approach our branch to take on the role sometimes we need to be on the lookout ourselves so kind of what we're looking for really is someone that has following skills there you go an interest in youth affairs leadership and organization and skills a willingness to work as part of a team and community usual um, volunteer, volunteer skills that we can expect from anyone getting involved in that organization stuff as well. So the role of the youth officer, so we've kind of broken it into three main kind of categories, representing the youth, organizing the events and leading um, the youth within that usual focus. So the roles of the youth officer, and a lot of this is in Renoon and Old, the document, uh, that's the copy of the page on the screen there. So the roles of the youth officer, uh, to listen to and represent youth members' views, to contribute to unit ideas and activities, uh, to act as a communication channel between the unit committee and the younger members, to establish links with other COVID units, and in a post-COVID world, that is one that I would kind of recommend um, branches would kind of look at again, um, linking with other branches, maybe some trips to some students or to other festivals in neighbouring areas, that could be something to know that might, uh, might need another bit of work now in this world. Organising youth-specific events, set up youth performance groups where possible, and then take, just having looked at the Avnucon document, there are some other duties that are kind of similar, but I just put these up on screen again. Uh, devise a program for finding opportunities or outside of regular classes. And just to be aware of this one, organize regular youth sessions in suitable venues. This is one that, you know, our youth officers might need a little bit more guidance with. Um, you know, the traditional kind of pub setting might not always be suitable if we have a very young cohort of um, uh, children that are taking part in sessions. Just to kind of think about where you're having these sessions. Um, when we were trying to set these youth sessions, youth sessions up in our branch um, we we often used the local community hall it was often a bit kind of um, quiet and the hall was too big it didn't have that warm cozy atmosphere so you know we had to think of, or, around kind of what, where we could fit our sessions another place we tried was the local school what we found that a lot of some of the children didn't like coming back to school for their session because they associated it with their day in school and homework and everything else so you know try and be a bit inventive if you can move it around is always a good idea if possible as well of course it depends on what questions you have for it that are available to your branch and keep in contact with youth members of course who receive attendance against something that COVID has had, surely had an impact on in many uh, units throughout the country and um, throughout the COVID community. Arranging ex uh, exchanges with similar youth groups again, um, quite an important thing for bringing up that sense of fun and community spirit in a non-competitive environment as well. Organising projects based on local history place names. Songs, folk, your tunes, and musicians. I thought this is a good one as well. That, that's on the Avnukon um, document. I was glad to see that it was in there because this has really kind of taken off a bit more with the whole Zoom um, atmosphere over the last two years. There's been a lot of projects done, and it's great to see it. And encouraging younger people to get involved in those projects is, is brilliant for themselves as well. Liaising with the county board of law is very important to, to kind of keep that networking throughout the organization as well. Um, again, in a post-COVID world, uh, promoting uh, participation again, not just in the plan of Kyogre, the SCTs, the TGCTs, Spiritia, any other workshops, et cetera. And of course, liaising with other branch officers um, for master classes, workshops. And again, taking maybe surveys of the membership to see what they would like, what maybe they haven't had in a while in terms of um, workshops. Um, Things like uh, you know you can you can you can branch out from just having um like master classes and in instruments having them in in dancing in Cotabato but even things like sound engineering or bringing in someone on to do something about stage performance things like that can be interesting and have a different angle on it as well. Working with the PRO and uh, this is very important in uh, relation to Magella's uh, um area of expertise as well. Again, coming back to the whole um as I say the youth officers or the younger members of the branch will. The strength might be in uh, create creativeness and coming up with ideas, the experience of their colleagues in the, in the branches. Branches is very important in terms of guiding them and 
uh, that's very important that you look at your own in relation to using social media platforms. So in terms of benefiting the, the cultist branches or the other units within cultists, youth officers can contribute to their organisations overall aims and objectives. So there are their apologies. Give feedback how well fast the sessions events are working. They are usually young people are usually very uh, very um what's the word up to date on how to get the, the latest food and surveys and what's that uh, questions and questionnaires that we on. I know that when we would do group kills that it's very easy to send a group survey and get feedback readily in a couple of minutes. Uh, looking at ways of improving moving forward help to plan new events and activities, wise and ways of improving information and giving the young people all the work and uh, work up and services provided within the organization, even having flyers out to the primary school and for registration, things like that, getting new young people to design maybe the flyers or posters or if the, if the branch is not a press, you know, to have a, a, a press competition and um, to you know make give a bit more of a stamp on any kind of um, public information. To the size of the cultist unit, again, helping with the social, social media and all other relevant publications. And one that can work well if set up is being peer mentors. Um, at the start of music classes a couple of years ago, on our branch, we did a buddy system with older, older uh, let's say students where they would kind of help the younger musicians organize their folders. Um, help show them how to kind of write down tunes and where to find online resources, that kind of uh, little kind of practice that can help bring the children to the all certain music, um, music classes. So then moving on to part two, so kind of uh, leading by example, I'm going to skip the brainstorming session, if that's all right. I know you're probably uh, looking forward to a cup of tea now, it's getting late. Um, so moving on to kind of ideas for youth events, again, sure a lot of these are going on already around the country and around the focus community worldwide just kind of ones that you know work well and that you know maybe um can be thought of it back again or having another think about again liaising with youth officer from the higher unit the county board for the council and the two members of the open very very important i think for networking and uh, getting new ideas and sharing ideas as well um having themed youth sessions uh, is very good for getting Bring in a little bit more of a spark into bringing a little bit of atmosphere in the session, especially if they're, they're happening right there. And maybe there's a few musicians that might drop off attendance. So, pizza parties or popcorn at the end of sessions, having fancy dress, Halloween themes, all of those ideas just to give it that little bit more extra that it's not just a regular session, they can work very well. Again, being involved with setting up a newsletter, a social media campaign page links with other branches again and other counties as well. Getting involved with what in the wider community, performance for the elderly. I know there's two nursing homes that uh, our branch would have been involved with having performances uh, in before and that they're lovely, um, they're lovely community thinking um, activities. Getting involved with tiny towns, giving them, giving them a hand for the local evening. Great again to, 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 to give the branch that real community feel that's not just about the music, but we are an organization or have a positive role in the area that we live. Again, as I mentioned, the mentoring program for young musicians, um, we found that that worked well. Um, a mystery bus tour is one that got great uh, traction with kind of the teenage ages in, um, not just in um, our branch, but remember we did one in the county a few years ago as well. And it could be to a musical themed location, it could be to some kind of um, activity camp, and can be great for getting a bit of camaraderie and spirit team spirit going. If you're have, if you have Kaylee bands and the show, you can use it as a reward for, after all the higher practices and lead up to jazz as well. Just give them that chance to kind of get to know each other and just hang out as friends as well, where the pressure of you know, performance or you know, to make any instruments for for the day and, and get that get that sense of camaraderie uh, within the group. Flag band or busking competition. Um, can often tie in with flowers or kind of festivals as well. It can be great for getting that, um, giving a sense of independence to, you know, how for young people to um, come up with their own performances and come up with their own kind of bands or small groups. Um, so more than researching local tunes, uh, organizing table quizzes, um, you know, including, you know, bilingual, uh, both languages, 
having friends on the whole to some music on local um, local themes as well. Uh, getting involved with charity or novelty sessions. Player for Scariot can work well in bigger branches or again if branches want to come together. Again, what I love about Player for Scariot, it really helps those who mightn't make the 10 on the Kaylee band or mightn't be in the group of those who are just starting off. They're a big part of that bigger group and it, it, it bridges any age gaps between competitions or you know, everyone can get involved in Player for Scariot. Um, branch awards can be a nice one to do as well if you want to be fostered of small awards at the end of a couple of sessions or something like the most improved the rest attendance attendance of the events. Uh, bus trips to summer schools. I know we used to run one out to the South Slide summer school every year where a bus and liaising with once we liaise with the parents we organize the bus we leave and pick up the kids and bring them back again at the end of the summer school. And we always loved the trip across the mountain. To summer carry for that coming back on the bus with their bag of sweets after classes some of the best crack i ever had um trad discos can be a little bit more for the older members of the youth um myself and aiden shannon ran two of them when sligo had the all ireland um again you can have kind of an un, uh, an, a teenage disc version of that and then an older age as well remembering that the youth officer just came up to the age of 25. And again, pizza, popcorn, or sweets are always welcome in sessions as well. Um, again, some other, looking at the Atnafon document, um, kind of similar enough ideas, but I just said I'd list those as well. Um, I know a lot of these are already going on. It might it might just act as a refresher this evening. But um, yeah, this is a good one as well, arranging visits to the Corn and our regional resource centres. Um, for us in Sligo, who will be out to the, the Kilaris Colon and Gurchin and to see the interactive space. Again, a lot of our youth members mightn't have been out there um, since before COVID. So, you know, that might be something to think about again. Some trips as well uh, that might be relevant to your unit. And again, you know, to encourage your youth officers to uh, to make a youth solid with our town of Lelka, Kuplifokal, the Lynn and Lynn the Emmett Thig on the session, Rudy Machine. Uh, very important that we always uh, encourage our youth officers to um to, to, to new sides. Um so moving on to part three. So focus on the Ray Noon and Old Book itself. Um while it, this is all this is in, in one sense we're supporting youth officers coming up with um events and ideas. The other side of thinking at us is that we are is getting them ready for other officer roles when, when they're a little bit older and to keep that kind of keep the voluntary aspect there that we have people on the ground to keep the organization moving and in a sense becoming a new top officer i know for myself and from moving up through from my own branch up to Corea, there's a lot of learning and at first it was quite daunting you know as i said here your creativity and brainstorming ideas uh is a strength it's, it's always a strength of having young people involved but how to actually go about organizing our, our ideas and planning is something that we need to we need to also be confident we might need to guide our youth officers to bring up people with. That's what we try to, to, to include in the Renew and Old book. So to remember that the structure from branch youth officer all, all the way up, it's a circular system in a way, it's a circular network. There's no hierarchy. Everyone is there to help each other and to network. And just remind our youth officers of that, that, um, that we're all in it together. There's no hierarchy between the and the organization. We're all out to go there. We're there to support each other and um, to share ideas. So, as I was saying earlier, the, what, what I've often found, and a lot of other youth officers have found, is that as we move through um, school and college, as I said earlier, it can be difficult to always be involved as a singular youth officer and to back to the branch and give it your all. So I often find found that having two to three, some kind of a sub youth officer committee can work very well. Um, it, it also brings in different skills. There might be someone who's more into the dancing, more into the, into the music, more into the singing. And to recognise that as well, that we don't, that we don't just kind of look at, for a musician or um, for, to take up the role of youth officer. I mean, if if there's if there's more skills that we can kind of bring into the role, uh, the more the merrier in that regard. And creativity, of course, is easier when more one person is engaged. 
and of course more heads the better you want. So that, that, as I said, it's kind of a lesson in democracy, how we go about getting decisions made and voting. So there's a couple of kind of um, guides or templates in the Renu Nanog programme. So bringing about that uh, kind of that lesson in democracy of how we work with nominations and getting youth officers to kind of get other people to get involved in the process of forming the youth subcommittee. So we have a ballot paper kind of uh, templated or something similar like that. So there's an example and then a print out page in the right book. Um, we, we have a template as well how to actually uh, come up with an agenda. So the idea being is that the youth officers would nearly run uh, like a branch meeting in, so that they're trained, to, it's training for themselves how how we work as an organization so how to make an agenda setting the meetings um there's a template there for the minutes and again uh, reminding them to write down their ideas and then that they can be shared with the youth officer that attends the um the parent body uh, be it branch and then you know once the brainstorming and all the ideas come into play you know, coming up with an annual plan, I would always recommend that youth officers are guided in picking five or six per year is plenty, that they don't get overloaded, that they might save their ideas and paper for next year, that they prioritise and they look at what is possible in the short term, the, the medium term, the long term, just so that this, it's a step-by-step -step process that they, they get success and they get support from the branch. So again, this could be shared by the youth officers, so maybe then brought to the branch, whatever so the case may be. And then having an event plan, and this is where they would look for support in kind of recognizing the different actions and activities that are necessary, and that they would have some kind of um, accountability that they, that they delegate the jobs. And again, it's not just youth officers that might be involved in this. And again, um, they might need more guidance in this uh, in terms of picking a venue, what resources are needed, um, identifying any strengths and weaknesses and the opportunities for improvement of them. Social media, of course, um, is, is a big role that, that youth officers have taken on. Now, since I made this program, Facebook, among a lot of young people, is kind of gone. It's as old as the dinosaurs. There's a lot of young people now. Um, Snapchat as well. A lot of it is Instagram, and I know Twitter is used as well. But um, again, keep, you know, kind of the guidance and the linking within with the PRO is very important in this regard. But it's great for kind of documenting the work and having a record of the fun and the creativity that goes on that we mightn't always see um, from branch to branch. And, you know, whatever is trendier that's kind of going on social media, if we can tie in or link in with that, that always will motivate young people to get involved. So back in, I think, I don't know how long ago this is, but the post on the right was, we did a mannequin challenge video where everyone basically freezes in the middle of a session in the, in the menu. And uh, that's a Sligo goalkeeper there on the right side. He's, he's a bar up there in the branch as well. Um, but, you know, whatever is kind of going on social media, can that kind of be used to kind of uh, bring in, bring our uh, events, uh, give it a kind of life again? And youth officers can come up with great ideas around that kind of way. And again, this, this page is a little bit uh, out of date with Facebook and the Mannequin Challenge, but there's always new ideas uh, floating around. So to conclude then, so working in partnership, and this is something I've always kind of said when I'm kind of presenting to older members in the organization, but also to youth officers and younger people, that in any cultural unit, young people and adults should work in partnership with each other in a way that is respectful of partners. It is important to involve all officers at all levels in cultural discussions. The youth officers primarily interested in how young people can, can contribute to the work program, but their views can spill into all aspects of the branch and to always be aware of that um, views should be actively captured so that we can have influence so you know we need to be positive in when we when we um, address the views and opinions and the ideas and if it's something that we know in our heads we tried it before and we didn't work that we kind of we we stay positive and we encourage it and say well, well it didn't work for us before can we try it maybe a little bit different or well, when we when, when we do something similar we run into these problems this is what we need to be think of for that idea to work or if you do it a different way uh how can we improve it on the next time keeping that that positivity guiding our youth officers and our young people in there is that we, we we take their energy and their creativity 
and we moulded that. We have a, a true and a, and a holistic involvement within the organisation. Um, getting feedback. So youth officers should get regular and timely feedback from their peers. So I'd always recommend, as I said, having surveys or information, uh, got some kind of information gathering tools, quick, um, just a little bit of feedback on our social media or any WhatsApp or something. But also from the subcommittee working together and working with their uh, kind of board or future council youth officer. And again, with the unit committee themselves, that they have um, a chance to speak in our meetings and they get the feedback and they keep it as positive as we can. Um, in terms of when you, young people come up with an idea that might involve rules or going towards motions, a lot of younger people, when they first get involved in the organisation, they see something say, well, that's, I really don't like that. That flat rule, I have no idea why that's in it on concrete. Why can't we change it? We have to make sure that when they come to us with those ideas, we explain the whole process of how things can go about being changed in a democratic organisation in terms of that, how abortions to Congress and how the flower rules are changing that they can take in a lot of younger people's view a long time. And we have to you know, let them know that there is a process and to guide them along the, the right way if they want to have a, a meaningful um, impact in, in, in how we organise our organisation, how we organise the flower rules and things like that. But that we you know, encourage them that, you know, if you have an idea, have a think about it, this is what you need to do. Uh, Put it on paper and we will we, see if we have on that. So, look, I know a lot of this you probably already know or that uh, is going on in your branch. So, already, hopefully, it was a bit of a refresher. Spread the word. If you have um, any comments or questions, I'm open to it. It's been a while now since I was on the org floor, yes, so I hope I wasn't too rusty there at that. Um, but, you know, I'm de I was delighted to be asked again, and it's great to have these kind of sessions. So, so we can refresh what we're doing and always look to, to, to improve and we can always move forward and work with the organization. So for me, the moment is there. Thank you, Damien. And um, on behalf of, of all our audience tonight, can I offer a focal boyish to Damien uh, for the Kuri Lahir Visha Anahimul, beautifully presented, lovely and colourful, and you have lots of great IT skills, obviously, as well, Damien. Uh, I just maybe hone in on a couple of small points, if, if, if I might, in relation to um, youth officers and what, what they should uh, aim to do in a branch. And you mentioned it there uh, uh, very uh, br briefly, and you said that you should just maybe select a number of uh, projects that are doable. In other words, there's so much presented here in this in this document and this presentation tonight. So the idea would be that um, uh, if if uh, branches haven't got the experience of uh, maybe working with youth officers, that the youth officers would just set up a small committee and try and select a number of doable projects. In other words, rather than taking on too much too much at the same time. And uh, and again, the feedback is very important to the branch in general, so that the branch. And the, and the other officers in the branch would know what's going on as well. That's very important. So I'm going to open the discussion now uh, in relation to this. And um, we're, we're going to uh, ask anybody to make some comments and maybe give us some element of your experience as well in relation to what, what maybe you have tried in your own particular branch area in relation to working with youth. So there we go. Anybody got a question? Everybody is extremely happy. And, and just to inform you again that um, this particular presentation will be posted on uh, the homepage of Coltus under the tab of Cotermirth. And already up there, you will find the document as well, Rain Nguyen the Know, which Damien and Orla were responsible for putting together, as well as other, other uh, documents as well. And I noticed that Damien pulled a few bits and pieces out of another document that was published recently called Anuakan, our branch renewal. And again, as I mentioned earlier on, the t it, we felt that this was the time of the year, particularly post COVID, when uh, branches are getting back to business again, that maybe efforts should be made to, to energize people and to energize what's happening at branches. And for all the people who attended this evening, can I ask you maybe when, you're, when you go home, 
that you would spread the word, as Damien asked it there at the end, just spread the word that these, that, that uh, whatever assistance can be made available will be made available to people and to spread the word in relation to getting youth officers involved, if you can. I know a lot of branches maybe have difficulty in actually uh, identifying a youth officer sometimes as well. So I, I, I can, uh, I can uh, um, sympathize with that, that idea as well. So any, any comments or questions? And I know Pat Flanagan is here as a PRO and he, he, he and Magellan and I are working together on this particular project. And this is one, one small section of it. So questions or comments or anything? Asunta, she sends a message in Mila Buyakas, Magellan, Damien, all information and ideas this evening. Karamaka to Asunta. Yeah, goes. I should just want to say there again, Damien, with your um your presentation and the and the, the role of the youth officer, uh, it it is it's it is hard these days trying, really trying to fill that role and, and trying to um to bring people into the into the role of a committee, you know, and, and the what they want is to get into the events and play and to do that, but it's to it's to jump the divide between the two. And it's 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 very difficult to do that. And I don't know if you've found any ways that it's, you know, and I think you I think people in branches kind of need to really pinpoint people and to br try to bring them, try to bring them along rather than just openly say, come, you know. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I, I agree with Magilla. You have to make the personal approach in many cases to people and, and rather than giving a general a general invitation to people to, to uh, come to any event, you have to maybe go personally to them and say, look, can I have a chat with you? And uh, in doing that, you're, you're, you're asking them personally to, to, to be of assistance. Yeah, like, so I suppose, like, just to go back on a couple of the comments there, like, you know, there's... What, what I'm very aware that, you know, it is a guidebook and I really hope that, that is um, the message that goes around the organization. It's not, you know, it's not like the only way or the best way to organize the, how a youth officer operates. And of course, it depends on the branch, the size of the branch. So some bigger than others it can be easier for some branches, maybe not so, so much for others. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's tailored that there are easier ideas and, you know, more kind of, bigger ideas in the book in the guidebook and you know uh, prioritizing one or two things and starting off small and building from there is a great thing in terms of finding someone yes i know exactly what you mean by that it can be very difficult at times and um, what i've often found is that in the last couple of years especially a lot of primary schools are as well as secondary schools are starting to adopt student dances so the whole idea of voting and democracy is, is is becoming a lot more relevant in younger people's lives, which is great. And what I've found at times is that getting the young people themselves to nearly like talk among us at band practice or within their performance group, if, it, if at all possible, and nearly selecting their own youth officer and kind of stepping back themselves and getting to have that maybe youth discussion or some kind of convention themselves and go from there. Sometimes, um, you, that will work well with, with with branches that are able to do it. Other times it, it might not. Maybe looking at doing that at a county level at first and bringing kind of inviting younger people to come together and kind of having a talk about their ideas might kind of get more interest at first. And when they hear of what other branch, what's going on in other branches, they might say, well, actually, maybe I would like to try that in my branch. Maybe I will try that and I might put myself forward. But, you know, the whole idea of being in an organization where you have committees and motions and the way we operate can be alien to a lot of younger people. And it can be a little bit daunting to go in and, and put up your hand and have a say. So in, encouraging your youth is vitally important and encouraging them to have a say without putting them on the spot. And you, I'm sure you've all seen it as a session where there might be one one younger musician who might not be playing that many tunes quiet in the corner would go, would you like to start a tune? Yeah. That might be putting them on the spot, whereas if you say, do you know what, if you have a set of tunes, um, well, we'll play them together for in about 10 or 15 minutes. And the same way in picking the youth officer, if the AJ was coming up and say, is there a, if there's a few people you kind of think they might be interested in saying um, to them, like, do you know, I think we have this issue in the branch. Do, do, do you know of anything that might fix that? Or 
what do you think of how we do our social media page? Do you think young, young people or your friends are looking at it? Getting them talking about the ideas first and then inviting them into the organisation where they have they feel like they have something to contribute. I think that can be an angle that we can that we that can be a little bit more effective. It can be difficult. It won't always work, and every branch is different. But there are a few ideas that I have seen. Again, a lot of this is from my own uh, personal experience or what I've heard from other youth officers working. When I, especially when I was a provincial youth officer in Connacht, you know, I got the five youth officers together uh, in Gurchy, and that was the first time we had a proper sit down, and that I even had met some of the youth officers and share ideas and. In a sense, it's it's nearly robbing ideas off each other, but in a kind of a very open and honest way. It's the collaboration as opposed to, well, that was my idea. Um, and that's what we need to kind of look at doing. Uh, again, if if you find that they might be a bit hesitant of becoming a youth officer, because they might think, well, there's a lot and I have to go to meetings and I find them boring, saying, well, will you organise next one session? Step by step, getting them included to, to, to take a bit of responsibility and rewarding them as well and saying, well, you know what, you did, you did amazingly there. Um, do you know what I found? I have tickets to the to the concert next week. You know, some kind of uh, a positive kind of reinforcement. They're just ideas of off the top of my head, I suppose. Michelle, have you? Yeah, and I said no. I, I think I think the I think the main thing is again, it's the it's the awareness. It's not. Um, actually training the youth officer, but it's training the af actual committee members themselves on how to deal with youth officers. So, uh, you know, as part of that training and making them aware of this document, that this booklet is there and that there is backup for them. So I think, you know, um, looking at that angle as well and maybe develop that into the, the training of the chairperson or the training of the secretary to always keep in mind that you know we need to look for people because if we're, we're training and we're bring, trying to bring youth in but i think it needs to start from the top and kind of you know filter down that way maybe yeah can i thank damien for just expanding on and and sharing those ideas there at the end with us uh, a lot of very valuable thoughts uh, you have shared with us pat flanagan i think you want to make a comment uh, yes um and thank you damien for that now, when I put up my hand, uh, I had thoughts in my head, but um, Damien and, and Magella have covered a good lot of them. But I would say that um, that the job can be a lot more meaningful if we give them a bit of space and a bit of responsibility. This is the youth officer now, rather than having just somebody holding the position, almost like a token uh, kind of a position. And I think there's great potential in having, let's say, a youth officer like that because of the way the young people communicate even with one another, like they're on the move all the time and they're just keeping up to speed with what's going on in other branches and all of that. And when Damien and Orla Brannigan were the uh, Oakville and the Old Corla, they went a step ahead of what they maybe needed to do in producing this particular uh, booklet and it was just a project that they ran with and they delivered it and they did a great job with it and i'd like to compliment them and it means that like that it's there now for everybody even when they have moved on you know they have uh, they've moved on at this stage but the book is still there and it can be used so um copies of that book have been sent out to branches and it's important just that whoever the youth officer is would be aware that it's there and just use it, I suppose, is the thing. Like so. Anyway, Mila by Castamian. Or Margaret Pat. In the Nella, anybody else would like a comment or maybe share some experience that you have in relation to youth officers? Uh, we have Eamon, Eamon Graham here from uh, Port Lenon or up in Antrim. Have you any any um, any? Nuggets of, of, of information that you can share with us, Eamon? Well, basically, at the minute, I'm trying to uh, work with a lot of the youngsters, trying to get them involved and sort of trying to organize work with, organize sessions for the junior sessions, you know, for the junior ones, ones that's only starting to be, you know, it's only learning. So I'm trying to get that up and running at the minute here in Portland Owen. So I'm um, like, that's. Uh, it's, uh, like uh, I found that very, uh, very enlightening the other night. Like it's uh, trying to enforce what I'm looking on to. Like you know, so hopefully I'll be fit to 
get something moving on it and getting it going on, like you know. So yeah, yeah, you can point them in the direction, Eamon, that we have that particular document on yeah. the website and this particular recording. This has been uh, recorded as well, so that will be posted on the website shortly as well. So those two are very valuable pieces of of, of assistance that maybe might might help you in, in, in the work that you're doing on that. Asunta? Yeah, I'd just like to say what we did a few times in um, Munster Council at our convention, we had a gathering for each county youth officer, if they would come and meet the provincial um, youth officer and then uh, we had the launch of book when Damien and Orla visited us um, they were great to give the ideas of what they'd like, but the continuation kind of fell away. And I suppose then with COVID and we weren't having meetings. But um, if it could be, it, it was something that I think um, youth officers kind of didn't know and officers of the branch didn't quite understand it. Whereas with this sort of revision now, maybe there'd be a reawakening of um, what's available and what the ideas that you have shown out there tonight is a rubbish mm -hmm. course for all of us. Yeah, I agree with you, Asante, and I think not just in relation to uh, re-energizing youth officers and branches. After COVID, we're really in many ways starting, starting from scratch in many ways again. And I mean, some of the some of the branches certainly would need to be re-energized themselves in relation to lots of areas of work that they should be doing. And this is one of the, the reasons why we have designed, uh, both Magella and Pat and I, uh, we have designed these, uh, these uh, information evenings, if you like, our presentations, our, our training modules in relation to sort of kick-starting and re-energizing, particularly post-COVID and issues of that nature. So. We're trying to find a mechanism and a way of, of um, providing whatever assistance we can to people to do it. And maybe those people that have, that have signed in and logged on to our presentations, we would ask everybody to just um, spread the word, so to speak, and that when we get back to, to holding uh, meetings of one sort or another, that there may be mentions of, of the availability of, of those uh, pieces of assistance and on the website as well, that they're there for people to, to log into at any particular time. So thank you, Asunta. Any, anybody else? Damien, back so, again. Sorry, just, yeah, just really interesting conversation. Um, it's great to hear. And I suppose, you know, from what, I, what I'm listening to, and I know just from the people that I've worked with here before that I'm talking to a lot of to people here who've done a lot of work and have tried so much with getting younger people involved. And, the beauty of our organisation is that we have an amazing cohort of young people that play, that attend our flags and that, and getting them to take that leadership is always a challenge. But to remember that that's the nature of it. Young people change and develop as they move on and they get different interests and they move away when they're in college. And that's just the nature of it. And some things will work for a certain generation that won't work for another. There's a lot of ideas that, get, that, that, that will work and they'll stick and others will others won't so please you know just just always be remember that that's the nature of, of of working with the youth that it will work and it, it constantly needs to be changed and revised the nature of the job of course as well or of the position uh i always think it's ironic that it's the only one with the retirement age being youth officer but um that that when people move on from being youth officer when they get to 25 it is starting to fresh fresh your mind you know, but it was great to see, like, even when I uh, got my pension up there, recorded that um, the, the the section in the drawer, the note, I thought that was a great idea. And it was something small and it was doable that can be continued on. Yeah. And it's holding on to those nuggets and keeping them going and getting as much out of them for as long as you can. And if something fails, what about it? Try it again. Have another to talk about it. Because, you know, and especially the whole idea of social media and the trends and what's popular. It changes so fast now among our youth. I see it in school all the time. Thing that the sixth class I had three years ago is completely as old as the hills to the sixth class of today. That's just the nature of it. So always remember that um, if you have things that work and then they don't work, 
not to beat yourself up over it. Try it again. Encourage the, the, the next crop of young people. It's the nature of, of, of the gig, I guess. Thanks, Damien. You're obviously extremely observant of people as they change. And I did mention at the, at the opening, at the start, that you, you have a lot of smarts. And now you're sharing those with us as well. So thanks, Damien, indeed. Anybody else? So are we, are we, are we, as the fellow says, are we flat out? We are. <laughs> so now just, if, if that is the case, now we'll, we'll draw everything to a conclusion. And just to remind you again, that uh, the material will be available for everybody. Spread the word as much as you can. Um, if you want to talk to other people, please do so. If you have any feedback, we would welcome it indeed after going away and, and dreaming about it or thinking about it. And if you have any feedback or queries or, or, or uh, observations, certainly we'd, we'd appreciate getting them. And you can send them to either uh, myself, Tomas, at call to start IE, uh, Magella at call to start IE, and we'll take care of that. And I won't give you Damien's because we might be breaking uh, some GDPR. There we go. So, and thanks to Magella for hosting it. And she's an awful, extremely busy woman. And she hosted uh, last night, she had two. The previous night, she had two more. Next Tuesday, we have two. And next Wednesday, we have two. So, I think we're going to take a little break after that. All right. Iwa, Karamagiv, Slan. Thank you, Mihal and Emma.